Now here is a situation where a disease is transferable. So if I am having it, I can transfer it. The transferability to be stopped requires a behavior on my part. Now the government has made a law, Delhi government has got a law that without a mask you can't enter, you can be challenged. We are following it. So therefore, the challenge of non-COVID patients, I'm sticking to the topic of non-COVID patients, the challenge how they are being neglected. I am a non-COVID person, but I'm at risk because people's behavior is endangering me to get these. That is chapter one. Speaking to my coming to my speciality of start standalone clinics. How are non-COVID patients suffering at standalone clinic? There are two issues. One is there is absolutely no guideline by the government or any other institution for what to do for a standalone clinic. The guidelines have come. Every institution should have a hospital infection committee. Are you expecting a doctor and a compounder to make a hospital infection committee? So there are no guidelines. I'm alone. I'm my institution. I have to be looking after myself, my clinic, my staff and my patient. There are no guidelines. So what is happening because of that is that the doctors are hesitant to start giving their normal services in their own clinics. That's the challenge that their regular patients of diabetes, hypertension, mental health, mental health is being severely affected. So their quality of care from standard clinics is going down because of non-availability of proper guidelines of what should I do for safety. Number two, there was a system existing of referral for certain opinions. Most hospitals have not available for any opinion. Today itself, I had a patient who had a bad psychotic breakdown for his wife. We have not been able to get a psychiatrist for the last two hours. So the referral system is also collapsing because that fabric has broken. Down. COVID has also exposed one very, very uh, important weakling in our health delivery system. And that is 70% of the people were accessing private sector for their primary health care needs. And suddenly, the private sector is nowhere to be seen in the fight of COVID. So all the preventive health programs, which have now come to a total standstill, had they been available with the private sector as a private partnership, public partnership, at least these services of immunization, nutrition, etc., etc., would not have gone down. So, we are working very strongly with the government and asking them that this is the time, take a lesson from this and include the willing primary care, private primary care physicians who are willing to undergo a training program and then conduct the national health programs from their clinic.